But there's more. Joining me now in a Fox Business exclusive on this day after the massive weekend, IMAX CEO Richard Gelfond. Rich, what should these debut numbers say to those who have predicted that COVID will eventually kill the movie theater experience for good? I think we should say to them, you are wrong. I mean, you know, the, there have been predictions of the demise of the movie business for the last decades and decades, whether it was television, well, you know, before that, maybe radio, television, DVDs, VCRs. It's always the end of the movie business. Now it's streaming, the latest end of the movie business. People want to go to the movies. It's a social experience, especially for these global blockbusters. You want to go with your friends. You want to be the first one to see it. And the numbers don't lie. As you said in your intro list, it was the third best ever, not pandemic ever, ever. Shang-Chi opened Labor Day weekend. Best results ever. So I think there's people living in an alternative universe when they're questioning the numbers, but people want to go back to the movies, no matter what others' narrative is. Well, this specific movie was a huge experiential event. My kid saw it, and he said that he went with a friend who was already seeing it for the second time. And then my son said, Mom, I want you to see it really, like, tonight so that I can talk to you about it. This is something where people are really feeling the experience, and it's worth it for them to go to the theater. But how much did, did the fact that Sony didn't do what so many other movie companies have done and release it simultaneously to streaming and that whole drama play into these great numbers? Well, there's no doubt if this was a hybrid release or a streaming release that these numbers wouldn't be close to where they are right now. I mean, when you look at the numbers after almost every studio abandoned um, an online release, um, they went steadily up. I mentioned Shang-Chi. We've also had Eternals. You know, Bond um, is, is knocking on the door of $800 million. I think that model just didn't work. There was too much piracy. There was, um, wasn't the same kind of marketing effort that went into it. There was the loss of global markets. I just don't think the strategy worked. And now, starting on January 1st, pretty much every studio has a, um, has a, a theatrical window of around 45 days around their releases. So, um, you know, they've been trying this narrative, a lot of the streamers, for years and have said, you know, the public's going to be happy watching it on television. And again and again, that's just not true, not just in the U.S., but globally. Rich, uh, there is one outlier here that could really send the numbers even further, as we said, into orbit and into the stratosphere. This movie has not yet passed through the filters of Chinese censors. Will it and when? So unfortunately, Liz, one of my skills is not 100 percent predicting what Chinese censors uh, will do. But the movie <laughs> was finished very late. So, um, you know, I think it didn't get a chance to go through the process, the editing went very much until the end. And um, in 2022, the Chinese have said it's going to be a much more normal year. In 2021, not a lot of things passed the censors, but that was partly because there was a backlog of Chinese films in China, so they weren't going to let in Hollywood films before Chinese films had run. And a lot of the U.S. films, as we talked about a minute ago, had online releases, which the Chinese I'm worried giving those films slots. So I'm hopeful. But again, you know, Chinese New Year starts um, the end of January, and that's when they play local content. So there's a lot of film, a lot of great films in the 22 slate, as you yeah. know, including three more Marvel films, Jurassic World, Top Gun, Avatar. I could go on and on. So I just don't know if this one will get through, but I feel pretty good a lot of the good films will make it through. OK, uh, but you're, you can't say, I mean, what would be the holdup for a movie like Spider-Man beyond the backlog? Is there something in the content that you think the Chinese might not like? No, no I don't think so. Not at all, Liz. It's just, okay. there's, you know, the quota is 34 films. There's a lot of blockbusters coming out this year. I feel quite good that a lot of them are going to get in. But I don't know enough about the internal politics, you know, at the China Film Bureau to know if it'll be this one or that one. That's all it is. 
Uh, you mentioned some of the big ones that are coming up, and boy, do we have some big ones. As you mentioned, we've got three more Marvel films, but on top of that, Black Panther, and this is part of it, Wakanda Forever, that's going to be massive. Top Gun Maverick. This thing has been postponed, I don't know, what are we on, the 38th time? When is that movie going to come out? You know, I, I felt strongly that it should have come out uh, last Thanksgiving when it was, you know, when it was last scheduled. But Paramount decided, I'm sure, after getting a lot of input, to wait until this coming Memorial Day. And, you know, I think that's what it's going to be. I think there's kind of a limit to how many times you could push it. I was fortunate enough to have seen the movie several months ago, and it's one of my top picks. I think it's amazing in certain re respects. It's better than the original Top Gun with drones and the way it was filmed and the story is fantastic. So that's one I'm really hoping for that it comes out. And, and I think the chances are good given how many times it's moved. And uh, I do want to quickly say that you guys came out with a live event that was really interesting. And this was the Drake Kanye West concert. We've got some video of this. This opened at about 35 IMAX locations, sold out in seven theaters. This was the free Larry Hoover concert. People were, were really sort of attracted to this experience. Do you plan for more of these things? What we do, Liz. And as a matter of fact, as you look at that clip, what was so extraordinary about it is it didn't feel like you were watching a concert on a screen because <laughs> of the immersiveness of IMAX and the sound. It seemed like you were at a concert. And a couple of people we talked to actually in the music business said that I had the best seat in the house. And at a live concert, you're watching the screens a lot of the time anyway. So the people really went crazy. We've had so many inquiries um, since this just ran. And you said we sold out in several locations. We did it in one day while it was live streaming on Amazon at the same time. So I'm, I'm very encouraged about it. We'll, we'll try some more and see where it goes. <laughs> Looking at people jumping up and down in the seats, having right a great now. time. I mean, that is <laughs> it's, it, it's awesome. I, I think that. All right. I, I think Spider Man and that in one week. You know, I'm really psyched. We just have to get through. You know, some of the uh, some of the virus issues right now. Yeah, I know. Any any discussion at all of any theater closures here? I know in Denmark they closed some of the theaters. Uh, that, of course, is a situation. Yes or no? What do you think? You know, I'm, I'm, I doubt there are going to be massive closures in North America. I think, you know, it's more there might be selective closures for short periods of time. But I think the American people and even the governments are kind of beyond that, unless this goes to another realm, which hopefully it won't.